everybody, welcome to the Comic Game Movie Show. My name is Deshaun, and today I'm here to review Marvel's What If Episode 5, simply titled Marvel's. No, What If Zombies. Now, this is the episode that, let's be honest, everyone's been waiting for. There were two episodes. There was, um, there were particularly three, uh, I'll say four episodes that people were looking for, and they've all already happened. One was the T'Challa being Star-Lord, because that was heavily promoted. One was the Peggy Carter one, because that was heavily promoted. And the other one was this one. And maybe I could, and like, I could say the whole Avengers, like when the Avengers died because the reviews came out early for the first few episodes. And some people were talking about how Dar how the third one was a murder mystery. So I just count that one in. But really, those three, these th like the, the episode one, episode two, and this one, and, and the Doctor Strange one, the evil Doctor Strange, all the episodes that were in the trailers that that we re all the, the now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, almost every episode that was in the trailer, um, I'm trying to think. Most of them have already been shown. Now we know we have a Gamora one where Gamora takes over for Thanos. We know we have one where I don't want to spoil them for you. If you know, what, I'm not even gonna say anything just in case you don't know. But when you watch it, it says the title, so I mean, you might get spoiled anyways. But there are a couple that no one's really talking about. One of them hasn't come out yet that I am fascinated to see, just to see if they get a certain voice, a, a certain actor to come back and voice the character again. I'm not gonna say it because I don't want to spoil it for anyone who doesn't know. But just understand. I'm a massive James Spader fan. That's all I'm gonna say. Huge James Spader fan. Loved him in his appearance in the MCU. And I'm curious if he's gonna return for his episode that's gonna involve him. So just putting that out there. But this is undoubtedly the episode that everybody, everybody was looking forward to. When we saw the trailer for the first first trailer for What If, when when the poster went before we actually even saw the trailer, a poster like one of the first what if poster popped up and inside the what if logo there was like little tidbits you can kind of look in and see little characters and whatnot and someone pointed out the zombies and they're like well we'll see if they do it then the trailer comes out and we see the zombies we see the zombie cap and like and then more trailers show more of the zombie stuff and we marvel zombies it was a comic book that came out not too long ago like relatively not that long ago Written by the Walking Dead writer, actually, so that should tell you, like, which is kind of funny. And I, I've never read the comic, um, Marvel Zombies. I might read it, though. Like, the only reason I never read it is because it always feel like, like, I don't mind, like, like, I don't mind the What If comics. Although, like, I don't mind them, but some of the more gruesome ones, I sort of end up learning, like, like, some of the more gruesome and dark ones, I'm like, I don't know, man. And... The Marvel Zombies always felt like this just massive would have episode. Like, it is so weird, because I like Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe. Like, I watched that, I read that comic um, plenty of times. And although it kind of hurt me, because, like, I don't want to see all these heroes die. I, I, you know what, maybe I'm just not that guy. Like, while I find it fascinating, I'm still like, ah, I don't want to see all these heroes that I love die so gruesomely and just like like the like that you know with no real meaning behind it and marvel zombies is why i never really wanted to read marvel zombies i was like oh man like i don't know if i really want to i'm down for this though i have looked at a couple of the pages clearly but still um that comic came out huge popular comic really hit hard it was just right up there with um with um some of the um it's a smaller little comic that came out of part two to it not that long ago and so that concept was one of those things where for a long time, along with Deadpool killing the Marvel Universe, is something that us, like a lot of Marvel fans went, well, that'll never happen because they're in the MCU, they're owned by Disney, you know, it really wouldn't make any sense anyways because they're in the MCU and it's like, why would you do that? So you always figured that would never happen, the amount of money it would take to get all those actors to come back at Robert Downey Jr. just to come back just to die. It would be, you know, a bit much. Though, I don't know. Some of them might come back just off of the, um, interesting, in, being interested, and that's a unique way to go about their characters. But, like I said, we never expected it to happen. So we finally get to see a what-if version of the Marvel Zombie comic. Like I said, I never really read the whole comic. I only read bits of it. But as, uh, like, as someone who read the comic and someone who was looking forward to this, 
this episode lived up. It lived up to it. It really did. I'm having a hard time deciding between this one and last week's episode. Because while last week's episode was more of a, what's the word looking for? Like, a just, just, you know, just a bitter pill. It's just like an under, it's a bitter pill. It's a story. It's a cautionary tale. This week's episode is just balls to the wall bonkers and just going at it. If you were someone who had never read the Marvel Zombies comic, like, this episode is going to differ. If you've read Marvel Zombies, you're going to be like, if you read Marvel Zombies, you might get more out of it. You might get more out of it, or you might get a little less out of it because it's not as extreme as the Marvel Zombies. If you haven't, seeing all these characters and the deaths and this entire thing, and I was a bit worried when I looked at the runtime because it's, always, it's the shortest episode. Ironically, it's the episode we're all looking forward to the most, and it's the shortest out of all of them. It's about 32 minutes, which you know what that means. It's about 30 minutes. And they managed to cram an entire apo zombie apocalypse movie. Like, the beats, the plot, the like, the way it goes, the themes, the, the ups, the downs, all of that in the 30 minutes. I mean, right down to the sacrifices, to the to the, the brutal ki zombie kills, to the unexpected deaths, to the brutal deaths, to the having to kill friends, to this to to the person to someone getting bit, to someone getting bit or scratched and them having a real dramatic moment about what they should do with them to the whole we found a safe haven and it is not a safe haven like I mean they hit every single zombie Let's just say classic slash cliche. Every single one of them. And it maybe makes sense in the context of the MCU somehow. Not sure how, but they did it. And I, I gotta say, I, I can't be more. Like, like, it turned out so much better. First of all, spoilers. Turns out this whole zombie apocalypse got started because of the events of Ant-Man and the Wasp. Crazy. To think that apparently when Hank went down in the quantum room to get out Janet, she got infected by something, turned to a zombie, bit him, and he came back. Now, it does sort of work a little bit like the Marvel Zombies, because the Marvel Zombies are a bit different than normal zombies. In the Marvel Zombies world, the heroes basically have full knowledge of who they are. Except they have un unsustainable hunger for human flesh. Like, they have unbearable, like, unconscious, just ridiculous hunger for human flesh. But, they are basically themselves. Like, they have their knowledge, they have the knowledge of them, they have the skills of who they once were. They have all that, except their hunger for human flesh. And it seems like they sort of kind of did that in this, too. Where... Like, Tony Stark's using his repulsor blast, Wong and Doctor Strange can still open up portals, and, you know, Falcon's still flying around, um, Hank Pym could still shrink down and shit, like, all of it was like, they still could use their abilities and there still was someone there. Well, because as it turns out, like, I don't want to, like, I don't want to spoil the whole thing for you, because I want you guys to see it, and there's, like, so much in this, but it was fun seeing all these characters, especially, um, Bruce, Mark Ruffalo coming back to voice, um, Bruce Banner. Got, got a little bit of a lot of stuff. Got, um, Evangeline Lilly to come back and voice, um, you know, Hope, and you got, yeah, obviously got Sebastian Stan to come back and voice Bucky. Got, the like, actor who plays Kurt from Ant-Man movies to come back. Got I actually got um uh, you got my fucking um you got John Favreau voicing Happy. Like it was a lot of great characters coming back. They got some new guy. They got some other guy to voice um Peter Parker. To, I guess they couldn't get Tom Holland. You know probably because of Sony deals and whatnot. But they were able to get um some other guy who did a great job of kind of sounding like Tom Holland. Also this finally people can shut the fuck up about this, which you know I'm sure someone will say something. They yes, they finally mentioned Uncle Ben by name. They never really had to because they have always inferred. There is a scene in Spider-Man: Homecoming when Ned when he, when Peter's talking to Ned and he says. After all the stuff that's been with Aunt May, you know, after all the stuff that's happened, which it means he's talking about Uncle Ben. Honestly, Peter's been handling the Uncle Ben thing like, like a real person will, like a real teenager will. Like a real teenager's like, I learned this huge lesson from Uncle Ben's death and I'm going to build my life around. No, that's not how it goes. In real life, when so when you lose someone who's close to you and, you know, and you're not a complete psychopath, you kind of... 
you can't, sometimes you kind of like detach from it. Like you're like, I remember it, but I don't want to just sit in that moment. I don't want to sit in that moment. Well, I have like, I have to move on. Like I have to move forward. I have to smile, as he said in this episode. And you know, he like like in the Sam Raimi movies, kind of overinflated what Uncle Ben meant because the Sam Raimi's movies made it so that Peter every damn move Peter made, he built around what Uncle Ben would want, what Uncle Ben would think. And that's not how it was in the comics. If you really, if you go back, especially if you go back and read the original Stan Lee comics, it wasn't like that. Uncle Ben's death was the catalyst to show him he was going down the wrong path and that he needed to change his ways. But he didn't, like, build his life around what Uncle Ben might, you know, he didn't build his whole, he didn't, like, like the way they did the Uncle Ben thing in the Sam Raimi movies was basically the Batman thing, where his whole life is built around this one moment. It's like, no, 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 Peter would have gotten there anyways. Like, that's the thing. Like, as you figure out, like, like in the, like, Peter would have got there eventually. Because even in, like, there's a what if comic where Aunt May, where Aunt May dies instead of Ben, and he still gets there. Like, you know, he goes down a path, but he still gets there. And, like, like I said, uh, they, like, the Raimi movies kind of inflated on what Uncle Ben meant. You know, like, they like inflated it to, like, a deified level when it was never like that. It was it was never on that scale. It was more of a more realistic depiction of someone who lost someone close to them. And same thing happened here. And we finally get a name drop of Uncle Ben. And, like I said, I don't want to spoil too much, but, man, it, it, it's, there are some kills in this that I'm like, okay, they're only getting away with this because the way they're doing it, the way they're showing it, the way they're looking away from it, the way that they're not doing too much blood stuff, and, like, even when people get infected, their blood turns black. So it's like, okay, you guys, but, like, I'm just going to let you know. That's why I've been telling people for years. You can get away with a lot of shit in a PG-13 rating as long as you just... You don't drop a lot of F-bombs. You don't show any actual sex scenes, but you can allude to sex. I just posted up a video for a movie I watched called Love and Monsters, and there is sex scenes, and there's a, like, you, there's a sex scene at the beginning. They don't show nothing. You don't see anything but a shadow. But you, but you know these two just got done fucking. Like, like, they don't have to tell you they got done fucking. You know they got done fucking. Same thing here. Like, you could, like, well, there's nothing like that in this, but, but with the blood and the gore, you can get away with a lot. Just change the color. Just change the color. Just change the color. Just do it really quick. Don't, don't loll on it. Make them look non as least human as possible. It could be aliens. It could be robot. Like, you can get away. Like, Samurai Jack got away with such shit like this for years. With just a with just a twist of him killing robots, but he's ripping robot spines out, covered in fucking black oil, which we know represents blood. You know what I'm talking about? Like you can get away with a lot of stuff in a PG-13 rating if you're willing to just get creative with how you go about doing it. And uh, I'm like, I'm, and this show is proof of they did a zombie concept. They did not back down from the from the gore, from people getting killed, from people getting eaten, from the just the, the nastiness of the the bones and all that. So they did not shy away from that because you can get away with a lot if you just get creative enough. And if you can't do your movie PG-13, you're not as creative as you think you are. Anyways, thank you guys for joining the Comic Game Movie Show. Please be like, subscribe, and I would give this episode, give it a 9.5. I don't know if I love it as much as last week's. But damn, did I have fun watching it. I might watch this one again. I've watched them multiple times, but, like, this one was so fun. And I'm a fan of the zombie genre anyways. Duh. That, like, it was just so, like, I, I have said a couple times that, like, oh, I'd love to see a sequel. I really wanted to see more. Like, like, mm, I really want to see more of this, dude. Like, this is just a fun concept to have in the Marvel Universe. And like I said, the reason I wasn't so hung on on Marvel Zombies was it felt like they was just going for the whole, oh, that's all is lost. And I'm like, oh, come on, man. Treat it like a real zombie movie, you know, like a real zombie thing with the team and everything. But this one was like, oh, it's lost. And um, they, they didn't do that. They treated it more like, like I don't want to get into the details, but they took from a lot of zombie movies that I've seen and I was highly entertained. Thank you guys for joining the Comic Movie Show again. Please be like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.